If you don't know who Mike Tyson is, then what planet are you living on? Today's video is Mike Tyson scaring the hell out of everyone part two by Game Over. For those, if you don't know him, which I'll be very surprised, he's the youngest boxing heavyweight champion of the world ever, and also referred to as the baddest man on the planet. He's definitely not a man to be tested, you don't want to get on the wrong side of him. Okay, without further ado, let's fire Mike Tyson scaring the hell out of everyone part two by Game Over. That, um, because sometimes my mind plays tricks on me, my mind tells me I'm a bitch. If you think you're flying and you walk around the baddest man on the planet, why don't you fight that motherfucker? But why don't you just go right there and spit in his face? That guy right there. He, that's my mind. Fuck with me, nigga. Wow. Wow. You still got fire, man. Whoa. And I'm saying, why are you fucking with me? Leave me alone. I don't want to fuck with these people. <laughs> I've got to say, to be fair, in his older age, Mike Tyson is a bit more chilled, but I still think, yeah, if you push these buttons, he's going to go. There's Sugar Ray Leonard there, and next to him is Thomas Hitman Hearns, and that guy in the blue there, that's Floyd Mayweather. What a fighter. First, let's go now to another boxing legend joining us tonight. He's done much in the ring as outside. Tyson there, winning for the punch. Mayweather has got the skills, he could probably dodge it, but you know what I mean? You don't want that connecting. If Tyson connects, that's it, game over. But he was a great man, and know what else was? Right. Only thing I didn't disagree, he never said he didn't like confrontation. No, he, he was didn't like not... confrontation. That surprised you in him. Yeah, and, I'm great totally and, I, and I'm different, I go right for your throat. Oh, I know that. I just go right for you, not only in fighting, but just in life, I just go right for your throat. Especially if it's, if it's a point where you violated somebody else's feelings or mine. You know? So when you told the story, for example, about being in Miami and kicking Don King in the head and having a brick of cocaine, that seems crazy <laughs> to me. <laughs> kicking Don King in the head and found with a brick of cocaine. <laughs> Rock and roll star, man. To be fair, Don King done him out a lot of money, so I can understand why he kicked him in the head. Well, that's what it was. Can you describe, uh, Mike, what your cocaine addiction was like? No, you can read about it in the book, though. Is there anything that was embarrassing to you, or is it well, pre something yeah, that pretty much all, pretty much a, a great deal of the book was, but um, that was the book. I, he wanted the truth. I gave him the truth. What would you describe as the happiest time in your life, Mike? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> if you want to know anything about him, you ask me. If I ever hear you, if I ever see you go next to my father again, you have a problem. And then I realized um, not to ever talk to somebody. But I have um, sh um, proceeding asking me to shake my hand. Try to shake my hand. Right now. Let's try to do it. Go through the procedure. Go through the procedure. Just go through the procedure. No, it's been like this. Go like this. Hey, congratulations. Good fight. Yeah. Oh, I see. You, you ask me no. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. And um, I think I, I, won't, I won't do it one more time. That was the beginning of that whole intimidating thing. I was a little kid and I realized... You don't talk. Don't talk to them. Um, just look at them like you want to kill them. <laughs> Fair Do you ever worry that you're being used for how open you can be about the things you've done in your life? I don't know. You don't want to give... Um, I'm doing the interview. You tell me. Well, that's what I'm asking. Because that's I, kind of a dilemma sometimes with dealing no, with somebody. is how much is asking and how much is using. I don't know. Everyone knows me. Like I said before, I'm pretty transparent and stuff. So I figure everyone see who I am anyway. I don't look at the world as if I'm a block wall and no one can see through me. I've got to say about Mike Tyson, and this is what I do respect him for, and respect a lot of people for, is honesty. I've said it time and time again. It's a quality that's lost, I think, these days with a lot of people. But if you're honest... You know what I mean? That is the way forward. As John Lennon once said, honesty won't get you a lot of friends, but it'll get you the right ones. Very true. But it feels like this particular process, this feels a little bit uncomfortable and that we're poking at you for book sales and that we're poking and poking, asking you questions. I, I, don't, think, I, don't, I don't think you're poking at me. Do you feel that you're poking at me? No, well, a little bit. I feel like this, this whole process is not something, you've done it for so long that it's something that's less than enjoyable to you. The idea that we would sit here and in order to sell the book, we continue to ask you questions that you may or may not want to answer. I don't know, I'm asking you everything you tell me. Everything you say, I'm answering them. I'm not avoiding any of your questions. <laughs> 
Again, you gotta admire his honesty. Just put him in his place. Do you figure that I'm avoiding anything, sir? No, no, not at all. I, I, but, I, but I'm not sure that you're enjoying it either. I dare you talk to me like that. You should, you should get up and kneel to me now and I'll spare you the night of the 28th. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also say, you come in and you come ready. You understand? Because I'm gonna come uh, ready. You understand? Okay. Okay, you know that. I don't know you why you ready. talk to me like that when you know I'll kill you for it. <laughs> That's what I like about you, Mike. You talk tough. Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. He's a, he's a ignorant little kid, you know what I mean? And This fighter here, Mike Tyson, is speaking to is Donovan Razor Ruddock. Now, Donovan is a very brave man to call Mike Tyson a little kid. You don't want to roll Iron Mike up. To be fair to Donovan Razor Ruddock, they had two fights, him and Mike Tyson. And I've got to say, you know, he was unlucky in the first fight, Donovan. Uh, the ref, I think, stopped it prematurely, so go on YouTube, check that fight out, but phew, this guy Donovan, he's got a bang on him. He can punch, I tell ya. He even beat Lennox Lewis in the amateurs, but fought him in the pros and lost. The guy could fight. Um, it's going to be like that. I don't want to bring myself down to his level, so I don't really even want to cherish that thought. I'm going to go in there and we're going to fight, and that's the bottom line. Oh man, I can't wait to the 28th. I'm going to make you my girlfriend. Hey, let me tell you something, you. Hey. You know something? I'm not even going to um, dignify that with a hand. So you know why I'm not dignify that with a hand, sir? Because I'm going to bring myself down to your level. There's something you can't buy in that class, and you don't got right, none man. of that. You're sweet. I'm going to make sure you kiss me good with those big lips. Happy now? You happy? Happier? Well, I'm, I'm cool. You know, I'm not no perpetual happy guy. I'm not happy. Um, 24 hours a day, every second of the moment, I'm happy. He he ha ha. But um, I'm cool. I'm you know. Can be learned in talking to some of the people he fought. Look at the look at here. Look at here. Just right laughing at. That boxer there with the long hair. I can't remember his name. The one Tyson was mimicking. That had a fight in public. I think Tyson was in a clothes store or something, and they saw each other. And the guy with the long hair was saying, "You ain't so bad. You know, I could take you." And it was like one thing led to another. And the next minute, they're on the street going at it. And next minute in the papers you see the guy with the long hair and he's got like a big eye, you know, where Tyson's hit him. And uh, basically I think the guy wanted to sue him. I don't know what happened in the end. Maybe you can tell me in the comments if you know. But yeah, never mind being punched with a boxing glove. Being punched with a fist in the eye by Mike Tyson. You wouldn't want that. That's what you don't want as well. Rolling Mike Tyson in public. I think there's a lot of fans who actually, you know, there with their phones taking pictures or probably being rude. You know, I've heard he's a humble guy. There's a lot of people that I've seen in comments on YouTube and they're saying that they've seen him in public, not bothered him, but what a gentleman. I know in this video he's losing his cool, but yeah, he's a humble person. McNeely on Samsonite cable. No, Sam Salmon! <laughs> Yeah, like I said earlier, Don King, Tyson's old promoter, ripped Tyson off loads of money, millions of dollars, so I can see why he pushed him off the table. Oh my god! <laughs> Dana White. I like this seat. I like it better. <laughs> Let's see, if Tyson wants his seat, you give it to him. Okay, that's all for today. Go and check these videos out next, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Laters.